Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. We've got some guitar hunting to do today. Yeah, that's right. So normally we look at these auctions slightly before and sometimes we look at them after. This time we're doing it just as it started live. So I've missed out on this one, but that's okay. I didn't really want it anyways, because the good stuff doesn't come till a little bit later. But this one is located at liveauctioneers.com. I haven't heard of it before, but it's only up in Addison, Illinois. But they do ship the stuff, so we do have the potential to win some stuff here. But in a worst case scenario, I guess I could drive up to around the Chicago area to get it if we had to. But the big killer in this auction is a 23% buyer's premium. Once you add sales tax on top of that, we're looking at paying 30% over what we actually bid. So let's go ahead and uh, dive into some of these guitars. So it looks like we missed this airline for 550. I'm not too worried about that. Now the Jack White guitar, that would have been cool to have. You know, fun fact, I actually came really close to getting one of these locally. And it was only like three or four hundred bucks. It was an absolute steal. But I think the guy was actually just playing around because even though I offered him way more than his asking price for him to, to let me come now and buy it, he just kept uh, yanking my chain essentially. So 850, that seems about okay. But that headstock kind of scares me. Don't they normally say something else on them? But oh, this copper colored electric guitar went for crazy money, 1900 bucks. That tells me that they did not know what they had there, estimating it at only that price. But uh, unfortunately, I did not do any previous research because I was working on that video that you guys saw yesterday. But I think this is more so a modern Dan Electro here called the Innuendo Dano Blaster. Well, we missed out on it. We went for 225. So I guess we can forget about that one. How about this Dan Electro DC-12? I mean, are these the newer reissues? That's what it looks like to me. 325, it looks like somebody's asking 675. But yet all these other ones are selling for like 400. So I don't think we missed out on anything there. All right, Dan Electro DC-3. Looks like some people are asking around 475. This one's currently at 350. So once you add buyer's premium, I'm out, I'm out. I don't want this one. Let's see if we can get ahead here. Uh, I'm not interested in the Dobro, but this one I am interested in. We need to do some research on the Epiphone Coronets real quick. This could be my chance to get this. But you also have to remember, none of these listings have been vetted by a professional. They're, They're saying that they might not function musically, so it's like, oh, that's kind of scary. But I want a Coronet so bad. This one, it appears to be in decent vintage shape as long as it doesn't have any breaks, cracks, or repairs. As these were made in the Gibson Kalamazoo plant, it even has a case. It's a little uncertain. Is that a crack right there or just some scratches? Let's look this up real quick. So it looks like some people want like three and a half. That's probably high, I would guess. Yeah, it looks like some recent sales of these. Like 3,000 for a complete mint condition one. Oh man, it looks like one went as cheap as 14. I think that's an outlier. It might have had some repairs or something. I don't know, maybe, maybe 2,500 bucks. Yeah, they're bidding it up to the moon again. Jeez. I guess let's just watch this one because after you add the buyer's premium, there's no room for me to, you know, <laughs> review, demo, and resell. You know, even with just the buyer's premium, we're looking at another 400 on top of that. So, I mean, it's, it's an okay deal if you really want one of these, but I would rather get the Silver Fox. Silver Fox is an amazing finish. 24, wow. That definitely sold for like top market value. Looks like next we get this uh, Fender Stratocaster Dakota Red. Wow, 17. That must have been something slightly special. We didn't even get enough time to look at it. Oh. Hmm. Maybe that was older than I thought. Oh, all parts body. Yuck. Not that that's bad. It's just, you know, it was sold as a Fender Stratocaster. I don't know enough about these Jazz Masters to really place a bid on one of those today. So I think uh, for the 64 Jazz Master, we'll just watch that auction to see how much they bid it up for. So far, it's still within uh, their regular range. But check this out, a 52 gold top. I would love to get that. However, it's already been bid up to the moon. $13,000. That's even more than I would want to pay without the buyer's premium at another three grand. But I mean, for a final user, 16,000, you know, the market on these has been going up lately. 
and this one actually appears to be in halfway decent shape. Most dealers appear to be asking like, you know, eighteen to 20000 for these. I would love to find one maybe around, you know, eleven or twelve. If this was an earlier one with like the uh, diagonal screws in the bridge P90, maybe then I would bid. But this is a later made one that has the binding. I would assume this one's just about maxed out, but it is a pretty fair price. Maybe it'll go for like uh, 16000 I I could see somebody paying that much for it. Whoa, that one jumped up real quick. 1975. Those are kind of hard to sell, to be honest. <laughs> Somebody's going crazy on it. 2200 bucks. Oh man, after you add the premium, they're almost at three grand. Somebody must really want that guitar. I mean, it's got a nice, I think, an ash body on it. I don't see that one selling for too much more here. Oh wow, looks like it was at a store for three grand. Yeah, there it went, 22. We need to look into the uh, ES140 here. I would like to review one of these. They're just kind of cool little Les Pauls. Whoa, why does that say only 3,000? <laughs> but you have to bid 13,000. There you go. So it looks like these things uh maybe two grand. Yeah, it's already at the max that I could pay. Ooh, somebody went 14. Is it going to make it to 16? Increments of a thousand bucks. Anybody going to do 15? Come on, give me 15, give me 15. Last morning, last morning, last morning. Come on, get your bids in, guys. 14,000. Man, it seems like they've got some sort of an issue here that they need to fix. Because that's like showing the actual starting. Okay, so the one that I'm really interested in is this Les Paul Special. Because I think they've got it slightly underpriced. I mean... There is a huge demand for these types of guitars right now. I think this thing is worth, you know, eight to nine thousand bucks. And it's looking like it's in okay shape. We might have to bid on this thing. That's kind of a strange serial number. Looks like our tuners are starting to disintegrate. But all things considered, I I like it. It's looking good. Action looks a bit high, but that could just be a weird one. The only thing I'd really stink about this one is if you got it and the pickups weren't original because they don't guarantee that stuff. But all this stuff looks good to me, so I think we're going to have to bid on this. We add the buyer's premium. That's another 1200 bucks. Do I want to bid 6000 That'd be like 7000 I mean, it's kind of a, a risk. Ah, no, no. Darn. I was hoping I could get a special today. I bet it gets bid up to 9000 it's always hard knowing what people are going to do for these things. I guess you could probably retail this one at like 12000 I mean, it appears to be pretty clean. So I think there is still a little bit of money to be made on that one. But I, I don't want to be the guy that pays ten grand for it. Closed at 8000 So somebody paid, yeah, a little under ten grand. Now this, that would have been cool, but I don't know enough about it, and we don't have enough time to do research. I believe this is uh, tied to the Beatles. And I know they're pretty expensive. Oh, wow, only five grand? That's what one of them sold for. Problem is, once again, there's no guarantee that it doesn't need a neck reset. So I think that's probably going to scare people away. If they haven't actually got to view this in person, I'm sure most people are doing online right now. Wow, people have not bid this junior up to the moon yet. Will we get lucky today yet? Oh, of course, somebody just did it. I do have a little bit of experience with these juniors, but it's normally the, uh, the refinished ones. So something like this, six to seven grand at most. It's looking okay. Oh, I remember somebody actually paid for a private help session on this one. And this actually has a Firebird case to it. So they were curious what it could come to. And I think I told them, don't pay any more than like 6,000. And that's if you're an end user. And uh, I mean, it, it, it appears, well, we'll see if that's correct. 6,000, nice. I hope that guy was uh, watching because I didn't want to bid on that and then be the guy that beats him out for it. That was not too bad of a price for this one. And uh, this DC, it, it's already well reached what it should. This is exciting, but saddening at the same time. I was really hoping that there'd be some deals, but apparently people know about this one. But it's kind of fun seeing all this bidding and everything going on. I hope you guys are enjoying this episode.
that Firebird is pretty cool. Whoever estimated it at 1,000 to 1,500 bucks is absolutely insane, though. Wow, 4,800 bucks. Somebody really wanted that one. I really want to see how much this one goes for. Because that should technically have PAFs in it, but to me, the finish looks a little bit weird. Do you guys think it's been refinished? It's a possibility. Oh, I like that neck. Is that finish checking or wood grain? Got a little bit of shrinkage. Nothing too bad. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Do you guys see that? Is, is the neck collapsing in on itself right there? Or is that just a strange photo angle? That might need a reset. Kind of looks like that old Wurlitzer guitar that I reviewed. But wow, somebody bid it up to 20,000. Oh, yeah. Are we sure that's a 335? That looks a lot thicker than a 335. Well, if it's got the original PAFs, I mean, what? A quarter to a half of that price was just in the pickups. I like SG Juniors. I've enjoyed the custom shop ones that we've been looking at lately, as well as like the various USA reissues. I don't think I want to buy one of those today. I think we need to get ahead here. And uh, maybe we can get a Firebird today. I mean, what is going on with that that they think it can only fetch 1,500 bucks? Seven grand. Man, people are just bidding this up. I'm sure it's Chicago Music Exchange buying everything from this auction. I can't compete with those guys. They pay top, top dollar for stuff. Or at least they used to, because they used to buy like everything I would list. But that was before I got like this big YouTube following and stuff. But they definitely helped me out on some guitars over the years as well. I mean, this thing looks pretty good. But yeah, it just appears most of them are between that six to eight thousand dollar ish range. So if that's at seven, I mean, unless it's something slightly special, I think it's already reached the top too. Ooh, a special. I didn't know they had a special. We got Tony Iommi vibes going on here. Yeah, it appears these things can go anywhere between like four to six, depending on condition. This one's looking okay. And the pickups, they look right. That's okay. Oh, it's got the original case. Mm, darn it. J just as I was going to click it. Just as I was going to click it, it closes. <laughs> Once you add the buyer premium, I'm, I'm not going to be too upset about that. It was probably a little bit much anyways. It probably just saved me there. <laughs> Move on to the next one, move on to the next ones. Okay, so somebody has not bid this one up to the moon yet. They're working on it. They're working on it though, <laughs> don't worry. Well, let's do some research. 175, 1965, what are we gonna find here? What are we gonna find? Wow, they're that cheap? Gotta remember, that's the D double pickup variation. Only three grand, geez. People don't like the 60s, 175s? I'm flabbergasted. <laughs> Looks like somebody bid too much on that Firebird. Seven grand. Guess you also have to make sure that you're looking at the most recent stuff. Make sure that's lining up. Yeah, three, three and a half to five, I guess. But if it's the original pickups, that would be uh, the patent number T-tops. They're worth like 800 bucks. And somebody's got three grand in there. I mean, this seems to be selling okay, but it appears to be uh, a little bit worn. Oh, are, are those cracks? Sometimes it's hard to tell the difference between finish checking and cracks. Oh, I love that headstock. That is beautiful. I love the way it's aged, the way that the tuners look. I even like the little bit of a dings on the edge there. This reminds me of like uh, like a really old hummingbird. I could see somebody falling in love with this and just bidding it up to the moon. Which, I mean, at 3600 bucks in this condition, it kind of feels like they might have. It seems like they're getting an okay price, all things considered. What's our next one here? A, a case. Show us the other stuff, please. Oh, the P90 version. ES330TD. Thin line double pickup ES330. See, that's why I don't like Grovers as much. Grovers are the superior tuner. I'll give them that. They last much longer than the Klusen ones do, and they tend to feel nicer. However, they don't look as nice. I love the plastic tips of the vintage Clusens. This ruins the whole vibe to me. Uh, that does not appear to be going for that much. Yeah, it looks like around three grand, so it's definitely done what it should do. What color was it though? 
sunburst. Naturals get a premium in the vintage market because they actually get their own separate name. Like if this was a double pickup thin line natural, it would be TDN. Looks like we got a uh, 65 335 TD. Now, if I remember correctly, 65 is your transition year. So you would need to know if this is the skinny nut width or the large nut width, because that's going to have a major effect on the value. We've got an ES330 TDC. I don't think I've ever seen that before. You get two dog-eared chrome-covered P90s, ABR1 bridge with a Maestro Vibrola system. This one looks to be in pretty halfway decent shape. And it's got the button tuners. Let's do a quick search. Five grand. I think they did pretty okay on that one, all things considered. Oh, gotta go quick, gotta go quick. So 3,000, 5,000, most around the 3,000. So maybe anywhere between three to four. Yeah, that might even be pushing it. Maybe two and a half to three and a half. This one is clean though. I could see somebody paying five grand for it. I mean, it's got a... One of those Vibrolas, too. These other ones don't have those. I don't know if that's a more desirable thing or not. I mean, it appears to people are going crazy over this one, so it must be pretty nice. Anybody going to beat four? Anybody got a 42 in there? Last warning. I think that's the equivalent of the auction you're going... Hey, anybody want to do a 42? Nope, nobody's doing 42, man. Just close the auction. There you go. Oh, no! Somebody did do 42! <laughs> Oh, 44, somebody really wants this one, they really want a bad. Is anybody gonna do a 46? Anybody got a 46? Come on, gotta do a 46. Last warning, last warning, come on, gotta do a 46. I was right, this is a pretty nice clean one. Maybe that trem system gives it a little bit of a boost. Next up, we are looking at another thin line. Ooh, I like that back, that's nice looking. But a Bigsby, yuck. I love the way Bigsby's look, but they're not my favorite, so I don't think we need to even bother looking up that one. <laughs> Who's paying that much for the Gibson Epiphone? What? Gibson Epiphone Les Paul Jr. guitar. No. Come on, you guys call yourself a reputable auction house. It's just an Epiphone SG Jr. I don't know, maybe this is like a reissue of the 1961 through 63 variation, but that just looks like kind of a, a modern day one. It's a bolt-on neck. This thing, who estimated it at five to 700 bucks? <laughs> I know sometimes those older Epiphones, like we're talking, I think it's about the early 90s. There's a few that can fetch that type of a range. But this one looks slightly more modern than that. I mean, at least somebody- Oh, okay, I see now. It's got zero bids. I thought somebody actually bid 250. Yeah, good luck getting anybody to bid on this garbage guitar. That's probably, you know, like $100, $150 at most. I can't wait to see if somebody actually bids on that. Oh my god. Somebody actually bid on it. Somebody actually bid on it. Oh man. Okay, maybe there is something a little bit more to this one that I don't understand if there's three people bidding on it. Somebody's got to explain this one to me in the comment section. There's, there's got to be something a little bit more to this. 400. That's not even the buyer's premium yet. Somebody's paid like 480 bucks for this thing. Anybody going to go up to 425? Please, don't bid on this thing. Don't bid. Just let it die. They've already scammed you enough. <laughs> Well, guys, if you ever need to sell Epiphones at absolute top dollar, you check out Live Auctioneers. <laughs> That's for sure. Did that? It looks like that last one sold for 36. This one, yeah. Who thought it'd only be 1 to 15? Jeez. That's worth way more than that. I think those are like $3,000 guitars. Yeah, it looks like the top end of the market's probably around 5-ish. Yeah, it seems that's... Already at market value, can't do anything with that. I'd say the last thing that I really know anything about is this Gibson Spirit. And the thing that really stinks about this one is somebody's swapped out the Tim Shaw humbucker with a P94-esque pickup. So if you don't have the Tim Shaw, this is the less desirable version that doesn't have binding, it doesn't have any type of flame top. 
it's really nothing all that special. It appears you have at least four replaced tuners on it too. I would imagine this has already hit the ceiling because I wouldn't want to advertise it for any more than 900 bucks. And even that I think would be a stretch without the original pickup. If uh, Gibson and Fenders aren't quite your territory, it looks like we got some Hamers coming up. Is that how you pronounce it? Hammer? Hamer? I know those are pretty sought after guitars. That might be the vintage 70s and 80s ones though. But this guy had a complete set, Explorer, Flying V, and Futura. This must have been like a limited edition set that they did, so it's kind of a reissue. Let's go ahead and look it up anyways. It doesn't look like I can actually find a 90s one. Oh wow, somebody's got that up to seven grand. Whoa, that one looks freaky. Is that a maple neck on that? I like the body. Cream plastics. I don't know, it just kind of works on that one. Arena Explorer, come on, we need to find something out about these before we get there. Okay, looks like somebody wanted 2,500 bucks and they got somewhere close to that. Now that sounds about right. That's kind of cool, it's like they got white limba and black limba wood on that one. I'm sure it's just a difference in how much bacteria was in each piece. But it doesn't look like anything is going for good deals. This was too well publicized. But it looks like we got some interesting Fender amps coming up later on. I don't know enough about those to bid, and let's face it, I didn't get any of these guitars, so I don't really want to bother with any of this other stuff. But this Tweed Princeton, I would enjoy that amp, I think. Oh cool, and one of the little champs. Those are nice. I've got the Gibson iteration of that, which they are also selling down here, the Gibson Skylark. This is an absolute steal. That's going to go for well over what they're saying it is. I mean, Gibson might not be known for their amplifiers, but they have made some cool ones back in, you know, the 40s, 50s, and 60s. It's, this one's just so classic looking. And the Gibson Net, wow. They've way underpriced these things. People have been starting to appreciate those more, just like these vintage vendors. So what do we got here? 850? Just as I thought. I mean, somebody paid a thousand bucks for that. That's end user territory there. Some of these old silver tone amps, they kind of have a little bit of a following. But that looks like that's going to be about it for this auction. I mean, there was some interesting stuff here. Earlier today, if we go all the way back up here as we watch these auctions go on, like, somebody paid 7,500 bucks for this chair that's made of legs and has a butt and has arms and has mammary glands as your seat cushions. <laughs> I don't understand that. Don't understand it at all, but somebody does. I'm not eclectic enough to understand that. Looks like that guitar just went for 250. This is a kind of a cool eight-string bass. Whoa. I bet that's gonna sell for some money. I don't know anything about it. Looks like we're missing a string though, so it should technically be a seven-string bass. I think if I needed to furnish a large home with some really weird, eclectic, nice things, I would definitely check one of these auctions out. Because then I don't have to worry about it, you know, being for resale and whatnot. It's just, hey, if you like it, you buy it, right? It's so like, you got these classy chairs right here with the red cushions. They sold for less than they thought. You could get all of these Italian Arben Ursula leather chairs. They don't look too comfy, but hey, only 300 bucks for all of them. This thing's kind of interesting. French Empire style jewelry stand. Oh, I thought that was like an eye, like a millennium eye or something. I mean, it's, it's interesting. It reminds me of something from The Legend of Zelda. Like it's got an eye, it's got the legs, it's going to start crawling at you. I don't think they're going to ship any of this furniture to you, so you'd definitely have to go there. But yeah, I thought these chairs were pretty cool, like for my kids or something. Only 250 bucks, you get all four of them. I can't imagine those would be much cheaper than like 100 bucks retail. The Hammer Special went for 900. That one went for 12. It's probably because it has the nicer flame top to it. What did that freaky base go for? 800 bucks. Wow, that did pretty good. These other ones must not have had too much interest. Wow, it sold for less than what they thought it was going to. But this one went for more. Looks like our, our goodies are coming up here. This is kind of a freaky bass. Kind of reminds me of the uh, Fender Performer, I think it's called. We still need to do that review and demo. I have one. Now they had some interesting pottery going on here. Nothing that really caught my eye, but I thought this lion was pretty cool. Alabaster Lion Accent Lamp. I think my kids would have liked that, but that sold for double what they thought it was going to. Man, people keep fighting over this one. What's a, what is it? 
Okay, 1982 cruise base. Well, I suppose we can check it out while we wait for it to finally stop. Okay, looks like round seven, eight hundred bucks. Yeah, that ended up getting up there. Oh, here's the good one. Let's see where this goes. What do you guys think? Let's place your bets. I bet it goes up to 2,700 bucks. Currently at 19. I guess we can take a look at these pictures as this is going. That's kind of nice. It almost appears to be a one piece body. It's up to 22 so far. Just a little bit more, my friend. That's a very strange <laughs> squashed down photo. Okay. Oh, I like that wood grain. I think this might actually be a pretty nice example. Is it actually going to end only at 22? Okay, somebody did 24. So somebody has to outbid it by 200 increment. So I guess 27 was kind of a, a dumb guess on my part because it's physically impossible to bid 27. But it's the closest thing to 27. Currently at 26. And I think the lying auctioneers are telling you last warning. Last warning. <laughs> 26 so yeah i was about right now the flying v i think the explorers are cooler than the flying v's but these vintage style v's are pretty cool and yes it does have the rubber strip right there but people are not bidding on this one as much i guess it says bid 18 19 yeah there's some sort of a lag there it's got the case the original case too Man, they use some nice wood on these things. I mean, look at that. I think, once again, they've uh, messed with the aspect ratio. of it. Cause if not, that's like a, a, a two-foot-thick flying V right there. <laughs> that's funny. Wow, okay. So 26, is it going to sell for the same amount? I'm Maybe this one's going to go... Yep, it's going for more. Whoa, going for way more. Okay, apparently people like the flying Vs. Yeah, looks like selling... I mean, this is broke records. It's destroyed, absolutely destroyed. Whatever has sold on Reverb. I mean, what's currently even available? Nothing. That's probably why. That'd be cool if somebody could uh, track auctions. Kind of the way that Reverb tracks their selling things. That's kind of what determines the online market. But if you could throw some of these in here where you find out somebody paid, you know, 5,500 bucks. I mean, the guitar market is just on fire lately. People seem to care less about what they spend. They just want nice things right now. It's probably because they're all cooped up in the house and stuff. But it looks like they only made 72 of these things. Is that why this one's going for so much? It closed at 42. Well, of course, now I find it. It looks like some one went for 5,500 before. And that one went for five, so I would say that's about right. So I hope you chocolateites enjoyed doing this auction with me. Yeah, sorry, not, not very exciting when you don't bid. I was registered to bid, but when people bid things to the moon, there's no reason to buy it. Oh well, we'll still unbox some guitars this week anyways. Thank you chocolateites for tuning in today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.